So here uh, today I will talk about some research that has been going on. It started with a collaboration with uh, Jesus Gonzalez, who is unfortunately not, not here today, uh, also from Liturgia and from uh, University in Madrid. Uh, it's also part of the PhD research of uh, Ahmed, who is uh, over there, hidden in the back with the Liturgia guys. Um, and um, it's uh, part of the Seiko Assist project that we are currently uh, involved in. Uh, basically, all is about trying to provide support for uh, assisting uh, software communities in software ecosystems. So not individual software projects, but larger collections of projects. Uh, basically, uh, what we wanted to talk about uh, today is this notion of uh, technical lag. Uh, basically, uh, the problem is, so you are either a software deployer or a software developer and you're facing, you have components that might be out of date, you depend on other components that might be out of date, and then you have, the, you have to find the right balance. Should I update my components? Should I stay uh, out of date? Uh, is it good or bad? Uh, the problem is, if you're out of date, you might have bugs, you might have vulnerabilities, you might have other issues. If you're up to date, well, to keep it up to date, there is quite some amount of work needed to keep your uh, software up to date. Uh, so, uh, to, first of all, we wanted to just know how big is this problem in general. So we did, uh, Ahmed did a very short uh, survey uh, to find out, uh, well, if you are depending on like external libraries or components, what would be the most appropriate uh, version you would like uh, to depend on? Because would you like to have the latest version, the most secure version, the most stable version? There is many different factors that may play a role. So based on a short survey with 17 uh, online respondents, uh, actually, we see that the results are quite varied. Some people prefer to have the most stable version, some the latest version, some the most secure version. So it's difficult to say this is uh, what we want to trigger. So if we, defi we want to define a metric that, uh, that can measure what is the best ideal version you would like to depend on, it should be a generic measure that can take into account all of these different uh, cases. So we have multiple dimensions that play a role. So in order to define this... Sorry, yeah. Just a clarification, when you say stable, you mean that moves slow? No, in this case, okay, stable, yeah, it's a bit, maybe a, stable can mean anything. In this case, we wanted to say stable, yeah, either it can move, uh, it can be two different interpretations. It could be it moves slow, it's basically not changing a lot. Another interpretation could be it has few bugs. So, yeah, so both of them could be uh, used, uh, actually, we, sh maybe we should have split this into two different uh, parts, you're right. So, to be able to uh, find this and to measure this, uh, in 2017 already, uh, Jesus and his uh, colleagues, uh, one is, uh, Daniel is in the room as well, uh, defined this notion of technical lag. And basically, the definition he initially provided for this is uh, this one, the increasing difference between deployed software packages and the ideal uh, packages that are available somewhere upstream. Now, the, you see here, basically there's two notions, difference and ideal. It's quite vague. What does this mean, difference? How do you measure difference? And what does it mean, ideal? What is the ideal upstream package? As you have seen in the survey, there is no single notion of ideal, and there is no single way to measure difference. So ideal could be the most stable, the most bug-free, the most secure, the most uh, functionality, the most recent, while difference could be difference <coughs> measured in time, in terms of versions, in terms of amount of bugs, amount of vulnerabilities, uh, any, any other thing you can think of. Uh, so last year in FOSDEM, uh, we also did some uh, interviews to find out. We just, uh, Ahmed uh, went to FOSDEM, he uh, explained this notion of technical lag informally to find out would it be useful to have such a notion that can measure this notion of technical lag. And basically, uh, most of the respondents says, yes, uh, it's good to have such a technical lag notion, but it's important to take into account all of these different dimensions. And in addition to this, it would also be useful to be able to measure the effort required to update to the most ideal version. So this was basically uh, the reason why we said, okay, let's try to come to such a generic uh, framework for measuring technical lag. Uh, I tried to summarize in one single picture what this notion of technical lag looks like. Suppose you have a set of software components you're developing or deploying. Within this set of components, some of them uh, are using a particular version, but upstream there is already a more recent version uh, available. In that case, you can say that <coughs> your collection of software components is outdated uh, and you have a technical lag. 
uh, which is, uh, let's, let's suppose that for this particular version, there is a new version here, which is which you, which you consider to be the ideal version. In that case, you can say, I have a lag of this, which can be either measured in time, or measured in number of versions, or measured as number of bugs, or number of availabilities. So uh, what we did was now we try to formalize this. So basically here, it's, I, I try to limit the amount of mathematics, so it's very limited. Basically, we defined just a technical lag framework where the mo most uh, basic things are you need a function ideal that says if you have your currently installed component, what is the most ideal one that you can find upstream? And a delta function that, which says that if you have two components, your current installed one and the upstream one, what is the lag that you can compute as a difference between those? If you have these two functions, you can define your notion of technical lag. Technical lag is basically simply the difference between your currently installed version and the ideal one. And the aggregated lag uh, over your entire collection of components is any kind of function that allows you to aggregate this technical lag over all of your components currently installed, deployed, developed. I have a tendency to, to talk a little bit too quickly. So <laughs> let me breathe a bit now. So uh, now this is the technical lag framework. So now I will show you a couple of different instantiations of this technical lag framework. For example, suppose you would like to measure the time-based technical lag. In that case, suppose I have a package that's deployed and the current version of this package is, that's being deployed is 1.1.0. In that case, you can see that's already a couple of different versions later on available. The most recent version, suppose we want to select the most recent upstream release. In that case, your time lag is the time distance between this one and this one. So you take the date of the most recent release minus the date of this release. Suppose I want to measure the version-based technical lag. In that case, you are simply looking at if this is your currently installed version, which is the most recent version. With versioning, sometimes it can be that the most recent release is not the most recent version. So here, for example, this is the most recent, not this one. So in that case, your technical lag would be you're behind with one major release and then you're behind <coughs> with one patch release. So the technical lag will be one major and one patch version. Or another one, vulnerability based technical lag. Uh, your currently deployed component is this one. You want to have the most least vulnerable one. So you're going to look, is there another later version that has less vulnerabilities? This one is better. So you can take this as the ideal version. The measurement would be you can reduce your vulnerability with one by upgrading to a newer, the, ne the next release. Uh, this is called either vulnerability lag or security lag. Bug lag, uh, basically the same. You look at the number of bugs, and then you can see my currently deployed package has one bug. There's another one here, two, three, two bugs, known bugs. Of course, the unknown bugs, we don't know about it. Uh, in that case, you can say, OK, I will not upgrade to a newer one because it has more bugs. So either I stick with the current one, or I can even decide to downgrade to the previous one because I know that it has less bugs than the current one. It's up to you to decide, but the measurements can provide this information. Uh, OK, so based on this, we did uh, like a quantitative empirical study on NPM packages. So we took all NPM packages, and for each package, we studied the amount of technical lag we had. Since there are so many different notions of technical lag, we only looked at time lag and version lag. All of the results, if you want to really know about them, can be found in this paper. Uh, basically, uh, let me just take a simple example. If you take NPM packages, uh, for each package you have dependencies. Uh, so this one has three runtime dependencies, 15 development dependencies. We only focus on the runtime dependencies. The metadata is available. Uh, there is some animation here. So here you can see, for example, in the metadata, how you depend on each uh, other package. You use dependency constraints to see. Basically, you have a kind of flexible mechanism. Since you can depend on other versions, you have a range of dependencies using the caret, which basically means I accept all patches or all minor releases, but I don't accept the major releases. By doing so, 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 so for this particular example, uh, if I take the transitive dependency graph, I have something like this. And you can see that this package, this particular version of this package, uh, suppose that this is the one you have installed, then it is lagging behind because uh, using this constraint, 
it's behind. Uh, it's, it can still accept this version, but all the versions with major version 3 cannot be installed. So you are lagging behind uh, with three versions with a distance uh, be between this date and this date. But you can even do it transitively, and you're also lagging behind because this one is depending on another one, which is even much more behind. So here is about, was it six months? Six months behind. Uh, so there, depending on how you measure your technical lag, you could only take the direct dependencies into account. In that case, it's quite acceptable. If you take the indirect dependencies into account as well, your lag will be much higher. So based on this and using the measurement framework, suppose that these missed versions are fixing some bugs or vulnerabilities. If you don't update, you might have vulnerabilities in your component. If you know that they are fixed, you will not have the case. So you can actually use uh, these metrics to measure how far am I behind. If I only take the direct dependencies into account, it will be four days in terms of time lag. If I would take the indirect ones into account, it will be 198 days. Uh, if I aggregate all of these together, the technical lag of my component in terms of time lag will be the maximum of both, which is 198 days. Assuming you take the maximum, which you can take whatever other aggregation function you would like. So, uh, so we, we think that this is a really generic and useful metric to use if you want to be aware of how up-to-date you are. Uh, there is already like uh, some uh, tools are starting to uh, implement this. For example, there is the David dependency management uh, tool which is available for JavaScript. I don't think it supports other languages, I'm not sure. But for example, there you can see I have a particular package, this is all of its dependencies, and you can see using these constraints which of the dependencies are out of date or up to date. Up to date is green, out of date is red. And you can also know why, because of the use of your dependency constraints. So uh, it is already like a kind of instantiation of the technical lag. We didn't implement it ourselves. Uh, uh, it's also quite uh, recent, but it would be nice to have these types of things in any tool and in a generic way. We also did another study just to show that this metrics framework is, uh, is rather uh, generic, not only in terms of how to measure lag, but also on what to measure lag. So for example, we did a study, Ahmed did a study on analyzing Debian-based Docker containers. So basically, a container is a set of collection of components that are installed, deployed. And then again, uh, the problem is your, your Docker container, your image could be out of date. And because of this, uh, you can have security problems and, and all of the other things I mentioned before. And again, you can measure the technical lack of your Docker containers by looking at all possible <laughs> package releases within your Docker container and looking at if there is already a new upstream version that is more recent. In this case, it's for Debian package releases. We did a similar study where we looked at Docker containers that are actually using NPM packages, and then you can replace this by NPM package releases and have some similar notion. Uh, and then, of course, you can again start measuring the technical lag. The main purpose of this is to just show uh, it doesn't really matter if you have a collection of components that are either depending on others or installed together uh, as soon as as long as you can define some notion of upstream versus downstream you can implement this notion of technical lag so here again thank you, there is um, another example of tool support that you can provide in this case I took the example of the sneak security management system it's uh, it's not open source it's commercial but there it also has support for uh, docker containers for example, here you can see if I have a particular Docker container, uh, this image, it has a certain number of vulnerabilities. And uh, basically this tool also supports how you could fix these vulnerabilities. Uh, and it's basically the same notions of this security lag uh, at the container level that are supported. Ideally, it would be nice to have some kind of open source tool uh, that also does take this into account. But to do this, we need basically an uh, open source database of vulnerabilities, which is difficult to get. So, uh, to summarize, uh, I, I'm personally I'm convinced, I hope uh, I have partially convinced you as well, that it's useful to have such a notion of technical lag, using different ways of measuring the lag, time, version, security, vulnerabilities, operationalizing it in different ways for containers, for dependency management systems, maybe there are some other things I didn't think about and to propose this as part of the chaos metrics and uh, tooling uh, that's currently existing. 
there are still some open research challenges. What we didn't do, and it's quite difficult, how can we actually measure how much effort will it take to upgrade from one particular uh, version to another, from one collection of components to a newer one? This is very difficult. It requires static and dynamic code analysis. Uh, how can we combine actually multiple dimensions? Suppose I want to have the most secure and also the most bug-free, but still the most up-to-date one. I cannot, uh, I have to balance these different uh, dimensions. And also, if I upgrade, I might have breaking changes. How can I avoid breaking changes, but still use the most up-to-date version? All of these are really difficult uh, challenges to deal. Uh, so based on this, uh, well, to start uh, implementing metrics for chaos, I think we have to start with simple, simple things like dependency metrics. We can just start measuring how many dependencies we have. Of all of these, how many are outdated? Of all of these, how many are vulnerable? Uh, inverse dependencies, uh, and then based on this you can have a notion of dependency lag, and you can also start defining deployment lag. So what we are going to do now, actually you're starting to work on this together with Jesus and Ahmed and some others, is to propose a series of chaos metrics uh, that will go towards this notion of uh, technical lag, and then hopefully also have open source implementations that then can be provided as part of the chaos uh, community. So this is the last slide, uh, just some commercial uh, break uh, as last year. Uh, it's, I'm not involved this year, but there is also the ICSI workshop on software health that will be organized in Seoul in South Korea. If you happen to be in the neighborhood, there is still the opportunity until next week Friday to uh, provide either small papers or talk proposals there. But the deadline is next week Friday. That's it. So thank you very much. I look forward to seeing those metrics. It seems to be quite an uh, interesting topic. It would be great to have some actionable, <laughs> I love it, <laughs> actionable metrics. Yeah. So thank you very much. Thanks.